Okay, guys, pl uh, please, I hope y'all watch this video. I hope everybody watches this video. Um, before I start about the celebrating of holidays, because that seems to be a subject coming up again, I wanted to point some things out about that. But I wanted to put, it, put out there, if you have a link, um, I've done this before, but if you have a link or a, a video recommendation or a channel link or you're trying to promote your own channel, which I just found somebody that was trying to do that, I don't do that stuff in my comment section because I don't know what's being promoted and it could possibly lead somebody away from the truth. Now, I'm not saying I'm 100% accurate, but if you have something that goes directly contrary to what the scriptures say and you put that link in there and people see it and get deceived by it, that's a problem. I'm not worried about making money because I don't make money on this. That's just not why I'm doing this. I don't want people to be deceived. So if you have a, a, a video link that you want to um, share, if you have a, excuse me, if you have um, a channel you want to promote or anything like that, my email is in the, in the description of every video. Go to my email, email me that information, let me look at it first, make sure that it abides by the Bible. And if it abides by scripture, I'm more than happy to put it on there and, uh, and promote it. But in a lot of cases, not all, but in a lot of cases, people that have done this, I check the link and I go check it out and it's completely contrary to what the Bible says. And so I have to delete it. And uh, some people have gotten very irate and I've had to mute them. But it's not about controlling speech, it's about controlling information. I'm not going to let people put false information in these comment sections because they think they're being slick. So if you have recommendations, if you have information, if your own channel is putting out, you want your channel promoted, by all means, email me. But if I see it in the comments and there's a link, I'm, I'm deleting it because I don't know what that content is. I don't know what's in that content. And it takes far too long for me to go through it, trying to find out what the truth is and then have to go back and find your comment and get rid of it if it's incorrect. So please email me with this information so I can look at it first. I am more than happy to promote truth. Even if it's different than me and what I'm putting out, as long as it jibes with the Bible, that's what I'm care, I care about. I don't care about whether you agree with me. As long as what you're putting out is supported by Scripture, then I have no problem sharing it. So, with that being said, that's a little bit of housekeeping, because I, I just had to get rid of a bunch of links in the comments today. Um, celebrating holidays. This is becoming another issue again. This is... Um, starting to come up. People are going on about Halloween. People are going on about Christmas. Uh, and now they're starting to invent new things about these holidays to try to get Christians caught up in legalism. Listen, and you're going to see this in scripture on this video. The Christian that celebrates Halloween. Now there's a lot of people that are violently against these holidays. And no matter what you say, they, they have a script and they read from that script and they don't care what you're saying. They just read from that script. If a Christian celebrates a holiday, celebrates Halloween, are they unsaved? You can't say yes to that question. Because the Bible says not to judge people like that. The very first scripture you see on the screen, Colossians 2.16. If a person takes their kids out to get candy on Halloween, are they joining in the evil aspect of that holiday? No, because you're not committing witchcraft. That holiday was originally started by the Druids way back when to celebrate their God. It has been commercialized. Um, Christmas has even darker connotations. Um, but it's based off of something fairly good. And they picked a day and they started celebrating on that day. It has been commercialized. If on Halloween you are out there doing witchcraft in any form, you are per you are taking part in what the evil part of that is. If you're just taking your kids out to get candy, that is not an issue. Now, a lot of people are going to disagree with that. I'm, I'm against all those holidays. I don't, but I don't begrudge anybody else celebrating them and I don't judge anybody else for celebrating them. I just don't do it. And my reasons for not doing it are because we got attacked by rockets a lot on those holidays in Iraq. And so I have a pretty negative inner internal feeling about that stuff. Now I've got a lot of bad memories from holidays in especially New Year's from Iraq um, but other people they want to celebrate it up go ahead it's not gonna cause you to not be saved we're not under law anymore we're under grace this is where people get this they constantly want to add legalism into salvation and you cannot say 
Well, because you stepped on those three blades of grass, you're not saved. Because that's evil holiday, stepping on three blades of grass. You all heard about that day, right? There's a day. I forget what day it is. Stepped on three blades of grass day. I'm just kidding. There's not really a holiday like that. But if I pushed it like that and somebody somewhere put it up on a calendar online and people saw it, they would be out there to anybody. You stepped on three blades of grass. You're a heretic. You know, and they would just tear them up. And I said that as an example because that's exactly what they would do. It's not about Halloween. not about Christmas. It's not about Easter. It's about what they disagree with. And they'll look at that other person and go, you're evil. You're Satan. Pointing their finger at them and condemning them to hell. One, that's not your right to condemn anybody to hell. Two, it's definitely not your right to judge anybody based on what they do. God is the judge, not you. But that's what people do. Um, that's what their heart is. Uh, you have to be like me or you're wrong and you're condemned. I'm the only person getting saved. And that's what they. You, that's what you find when you talk to them. When you get them down to the bottom of what their belief is, they're the only person on the earth that's saved and everybody else is going to hell. Unless you very specifically believe what they believe and donate to their cause. And there usually is always money involved in it too. Guys, don't fall for this stuff. Listen, your relationship with Christ, your relationship with God is a specific relationship. It's like if me and you were friends. Our relationship is specific. Now me and this other person, we have a specific relationship. Y'all's relationship with me isn't the same. You two develop a relationship. Your relationship is different than the relationship each of you has with me. Relationships are specific to the person. They are not generalized. The same thing is with us in Christ and us in God. Our relationship is specific. So who are we to tell somebody else, oh, you can't celebrate Halloween. That's the devil's day. Well, actually, no, Halloween isn't the devil's day. It's, it has nothing to do with that. A whole bunch of people way back when who were doing human sacrifice and uh, trying to worship other gods started doing this around this time frame, not this exact day. And over time, this day, Halloween, was picked for that time frame. And this is what people get on their high horse about. Don't do that stuff. Especially don't do it with me, because I don't fall for that. I have grown in my understanding that it's not about the holiday. It's about what you're doing involving the holiday. If you're taking your kids trick-or-treating, great. Give them a piece of candy. If you're out there doing witchcraft on that day, that's a whole different animal. So let's go into some scriptures about this. Because this involves every holiday. Now, see, what's also ironic is there's some of these people out there. They get on to you about celebrating Christmas and Halloween, yet they love to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. Did you know St. Patrick's Day was a, originally a day where they had bombed and killed a whole bunch of people in, in Ireland? So that's a day of death. Why are you celebrating it? They wore green on that day to indicate who knew and who was on the right side and they killed everybody else. Yeah, very, very unknown fact about that stuff. Then there's Valentine's Day, same thing. It involved death. It never, it wasn't intended to be about loving somebody and giving them flowers and giving them heart candy and all this gooey stuff. It was about death. But yet, here's look what they did. They commercialized it to make money on it. And everybody thinks it's fine. Oh, Valentine's Day is fine. Well, wait a minute. If you have a problem with these holidays, you got to have a problem with all of them. You cannot just pick the ones you want and make it the way you want it. This isn't Burger King. So in Colossians 2.16, it says, Therefore, let no one pass judgment on you in questions of food or drink. That means you can't make fun of a vegetarian or a vegan and they can't make fun of us. Or with regard to a festival any of the parties, the big things. A lot of people are down about Sturgis because of the stuff that's going on there. It's not wrong to go to something like that. What you do there is different. Or new moons. There are new moon celebrations. In fact, the Jews do new moon celebrations. Or a Sabbath. And this is the big one. Oh, but you have to celebrate it on Saturday. Oh, but you, you don't have to celebrate on Saturday. You can celebrate it on Sunday. Oh, but you can celebrate it any day. And everybody argues about that. And there is no argument. Here is the scripture, just one, that explains that and puts it in perspective. But wait, there's more. Romans 14, 5, 6. One person esteems one day as better than another. 
This includes Sabbath or holidays. While another esteems all days alike, each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. The one who observes the day honors uh, observes the day, observes it in honor of the Lord. The one who eats eats in honor of the Lord, since he gives thanks to God. While the one who abstains abstains in honor of the Lord and gives thanks to God. We are not to look down on other people when they do it differently than we do. Because if they're giving thanks and they're honoring God in this, there's nothing wrong with it. It's what you do for those things. That's what makes the difference. It's not generalized. You can't lump everybody that celebrates Halloween as evil. Can't, you can't do it. it. It's just wrong to do it. You have to look at the individual because we have individual relationships. Romans 14, 1 through 23 as for the one who is weak in faith, welcome him, but not to quarrel over opinions. So we have people out there who don't understand. And that's what this is. It's, it's weak faith. You don't fully understand what's going on because you haven't read your Bible and the Spirit hasn't opened this up to you. This is why I harp on this. Read your Bible. Watching somebody's video who's reading the Bible is not reading the Bible. You must physically open the pages. You must open your app. On your phone and you must read the scriptures in order to count that as reading your Bible watching somebody do it on the video and taking what they've told you as gospel is not reading the Bible you will not get the correct interpretation for you because this person was shown one thing based on their experiences in their life you may get shown something a little bit different as long as it matches the Word of God it's, it's right um, let not the one who eats despise the one who abstains, and let not the one who abstains pass judgment on the one who eats. This is somebody who eats meat, somebody who eats vegetables. For God has welcomed him. Who are you to pass judgment on the servant of another? I can no more judge my brother or sister out there who serves the same God I do about anything they do than they can judge me. God is the judge. It is before his own master that he stands or falls, and he will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make him stand. So it's not about, it's not about what we think. One person esteems one day as better than another, while another seems all days alike. Each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. And now we're going to go into Old Testament. Listen to what God says in the Old Testament. And this is when the law was being given. Isaiah 1, 14 through 15. Your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hates. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. God didn't, he doesn't like the holidays that we do. Because they don't honor him. But under grace, is it wrong? Well, it depends on what you're doing involving the holiday. It has everything to do with that. Esther 9, 20-22, And Mordecai recorded these things and sent letters to all the Jews who were in all the provinces of King, ah King Ahasuerus. I know I said that wrong. Both near and far, obliging them to keep the 14th day of the month of Adar, and also the 15th day of the same year by year, as the days on which the Jews got relief from their enemies, and as the month that had been turned from them for sorrow into gladness and from mourning into a holiday that they should make them days of feasting and gladness, days for sending gifts of food to one another and gifts to the poor. It kind of sounds like Christmas, doesn't it? Jeremiah 10, 1 through 4. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word that the Lord speaks to you, O house of Israel. Thus says the Lord, Learn not the way of the nations, nor be dismayed at the signs of the heavens, because the nations are dismayed at them. For the customs of the peoples are vanity. Halloween, dressing up, trying to have better costume than someone else, vanity. Some of the women, some of the stuff they wear is porn star level. Um, and Christmas, the same way. They do the same exact thing. It's vanity. Uh, where was I at? Um, a tree from the forest is cut down and worked with an axe by the hands of a craftsman. They decorate it with silver and gold. They fasten it with hammer and nails so that it cannot be moved. Sounds like Christmas, doesn't it? <clears throat> Go read more of that in that chapter. Deuteronomy 12, 29, 32. 
When the Lord your God cuts off before you the nations whom you go in to dispossess, and you dispossess them and dwell in their land, take care that you do not that you be not ensnared to follow them. This happened in Egypt before the Exodus, after they have been destroyed before you, and that you do not inquire about their gods, saying, How did these nations serve their gods? That I may also do the same. You shall not worship the Lord your God in that way, for every abominable thing that the Lord hates they have done for their gods. For they even burned their sons and their daughters, they were offering them up to Molech and Balaam, in the fire to their gods. Everything that I command you, you shall be careful to do. You shall not add to it or take from it. This was when the law was being given. A lot of people don't know about these scriptures. A lot of people don't cover this. This is why I say read your Bible. Read it, read it, read it. And don't read it looking for stuff you can use against other people and what they say. Read it looking for the truth. When you read it looking for the truth, so much more opens up to you. Colossians 2.8 See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit. We have this going on right now. I just did a video this morning about it. According to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. It's very important that we watch what we're listening to. This is one great reason why at the beginning of this video I put, put up that notice. If you have a link to something you want me to share, you must email it to me first. If you put it in a comment, I'm deleting it. Because if I don't know that person, if I don't know that video, if I don't know the content that's contained in there, or what that's going to lead to, and it's something that contradicts what the scriptures say, it is wrong and it is going to get deleted. Email me that stuff, because I know why you guys put it in the comments, because you don't want me to, you're hoping I'll miss it. But I go through and check my comments on all my videos, and I'm, I find them every couple of days I find more. Email me that content so I can look at it first. Because I want to look at it to make sure it's truth. It doesn't have to agree with what I say. It just needs to be truth as the scriptures say. And as long as it matches that, then we're 100%. We're and I'm more than happy to put it in there and I'll pin it to the top of the comments. Otherwise, if I see any comment, I'm going to delete it because I don't know what's contained therein. Uh, Galatians 4.10, you observe days and months and seasons and years. I wish they would have put more in there, but you can go look at that one yourself, Galatians 4. Matthew 15.3, he answered them. And why do you break the commandment of God for the sake of your tradition? Go look more into what he's talking about on there. Because of what they were doing. And it gives you more insight into what we're talking about here. Um, well, here we go. Galatians 4, 10-11, you observe days and months and seasons and years. I am afraid I may have labored over you in vain. That was Paul talking. And this is a great, this is a great verse, Luke 16, 15. And he said to them, you are those who justify yourselves before men. But God knows your hearts. For what is exalted among men is an abomination in the sight of God. Listen, there are a lot of people out there who have done gone to great lengths and spent a lot of money to exalt themselves in what they think they know above God and above the truth. They put themselves into positions or have attained leadership positions that they think makes them better than everyone else that they're speaking to. Pastors are horrible about this. Preachers and teachers are horrible about this. There are a bunch of them in, the na in our nation right now that are calling themselves apostles and prophets, and they are not. They are the furthest thing from it. But people in those churches are just chucking money at them. And they're doing it to get rich. A true apostle will not walk around in a thousand dollar suit. A true apostle will not partake of the money. A true apostle will be working for the church. Go read what the, what the apostles in the Bible did. They did the same thing. When they went to another church and stayed somewhere, they worked. That person had fields, they worked in their fields. They helped them, they were not a burden to them. Yet it's the other way around nowadays because it's demonic. But this is what happens. People trying to justify themselves. They twist the scriptures to justify themselves. Oh, if we want to be perfect Christians, we got to follow the Torah. No, why are you justifying yourself? You cannot be a Jew. What does Jesus say? In Christ, no, it wasn't Jesus. I forget who it was now. In Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither Jew nor Gentile. There's neither slave or free. 
There's neither rich nor poor. There's neither male nor female. All are same, are the same in Christ. Yet people constantly elevate themselves up above everyone else. Wrong. You are not. There is one teacher. There is one father. There is one God. And no one else holds a higher position over their brothers and sisters than anyone else. In fact, those in the higher positions have the greater condemnation. The Bible says that. But they don't see it that way. Here's that Colossians. The Colossians 2, 16-17. Therefore, let no one pass judgment on you in questions of food or drink, or with regard to a festival, or a new moon, or a Sabbath. These are a shadow of things to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. All the stuff that, that people are trying to do, uh, Christians that are trying to observe all these holidays and all these things that are going on over there, I don't begrudge them that in one iota. But these are merely shadows of what's coming, and Christ will get us all straight on that. Where's your faith? So, let me end with... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the next two and end with that. Um, so clearly we see what the deal is with holidays. It's not the holiday that's the problem. It's what you're doing in that holiday. It's how you're honoring that holiday. Because there are a lot of different ways to do it. You can tell Halloween, just take your kids out, get candy, and go home. Or you can actually get involved in the very evil things involving that day. Guys, on that day when you're taking your kids out, there's a lot of witchcraft going on. In the very neighborhoods you're taking your kids to get candy in. I don't do it anymore anyway because there's too many people messing with candy. And one of the first ones it was in Oklahoma back in the 70s. A guy, the, the giant pixie sticks were all the rage. And this guy put enough cyanide to kill two full-grown adults in the top of those pixie sticks. And a little boy died because he ate that pixie stick before he went to bed. And that started just onslaught. Candy bars with razor blades in them, broken glass mixed up in pixie sticks, all this junk. And it's, I've had my fill of it. I had to have stuff, had to have stuff extrayed a couple of times, and you can see the little needles sticking in through the candy. Because people are childish, they're idiots, they're evil. Galatians four eight through eleven. Formerly, when you did not know God, you were enslaved to those that by nature are not gods. But now that you have come to know God, or rather to be known by God, how can you turn back again to the weak and worthless elementary principles of the world, whose slaves you want to be once more? You observe days and months and seasons and years. I am afraid I have labored over you in vain. Now, this is what we were talked about earlier. I told you go read Galatians 4. Well, here's more on it. Here's a bit better perspective. Why would you put yourselves back under all this stuff? He's, he's saying... Don't worry about celebrating that stuff because that stuff doesn't matter. Here, right in here in the heart, that's what matters. That's what makes a difference. That's what God's paying attention to. This is the age of grace. What we do on the outside doesn't matter anymore. It's what we do on the inside. We can look like a Christian on the outside and it does nothing for us. It is merely a Halloween costume. But when the change happens on the inside, that's the change he's looking for. That's what needs to happen is the inward change, not the outward change. They keep going on and on about the water baptism. Where in the Bible does it say water baptism is required? You can't show me the scriptures that say they took them and baptized, baptized them. That does not say it's a requirement. That's what they did for them. And many people didn't get baptized back then. Because there was no water to get baptized with. They did the little on their head or something like that, you know, or just splashed it in their face. Or in some cases, didn't even do that because water was too precious. How do you explain those people? The thief on the cross didn't get baptized. It wasn't raining when they did that, so God didn't baptize him. And if he was a thief, he, he wasn't tied to any, and they weren't even hardly baptizing anybody back then anyway. Only John was, because John was paving the way for Jesus. And as a, a point of fact... John, when Jesus came, right after Jesus went and visited him and got baptized in the River Jordan, John was put into prison. So John wasn't baptizing anymore. There was hardly anything going on involving baptism. It wasn't until after Jesus died because they had something to baptize them into. Before it was, 
baptizing him for the remission of sins. After was baptizing into Christ for salvation. Little details. Got to think about this stuff. But it's all in the scripture. So if baptism ended with John the Baptist, yet they came forward, and look what happened when they came forward. Acts 10, chapter 10 and 11, and, and elsewhere. Look what happened. Baptism wasn't needed for the Holy Spirit to end well, yet they'll tell you that. Well, you've got to get baptized to get the Holy Spirit. Then why were these Gentiles in Acts chapter 10 and chapter 12, or chapter 10 and chapter 11, why did those Gentiles get the Holy Spirit before they got baptized? Hmm? Because the Pharisees in the room, Jews, were like, wait a minute, the Holy Spirit fell on these Gentiles and they hadn't even been touched yet. They were just listening. What happened? It's because the faith was different. The Gentiles didn't need, they weren't under the law. They didn't need that. They believed it just like that it happened. The Pharisees were Jews, born under the law. They had to do something to cross the threshold for salvation. And many of them, not all, but many of them, when they got baptized, Holy Spirit. Because that's how their faith worked. Our faith is the same way. Our faith worked differently. What I need for my faith is different than what you need for your faith. So when the Holy Spirit indwells me, it gives me what I can work with and what I need. When it indwells you, it gives you what you can work with and what you need. That's why some people have prayer language and some don't. You needed that for your faith, so the Holy Spirit gave it to you. I didn't need it for my faith. The Holy Spirit didn't give it to me. It's not a negative. It doesn't separate us. It brings us together because now more of a blessing can happen if we learn that these gifts are meant to bless each other with. But people want to use them as a weapon. Oh, you don't have tongues? You're not saved. Well, wait a second. I did a video on this. Prayer language and tongues are two different things. You think you're praying in the, in the tongue and you're just praying in your prayer language. Now, there's a lot of people who don't have nothing. They're just throwing gibberish out there thinking that they're doing something cool when they're not. That's not tongues. That's demonic. But there are there is a prayer language. The Bible talks about this. And you can have that prayer language, but you can't use it as a weapon against your brothers and sisters. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 13, and 14. Go read them. It tells you exactly about tongues and gifts. Mark 7, 6 through 9. And he said to them, Well did Isaiah prophesy to you hypocrites, as it is written, These people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrine the commandments of men. You leave the commandment of God and hold to the tradition of men. And he said to them, you have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your tradition. And that is what we see in the charismatic movement. That's what we see in this, the video I did this morning, the Yeshua restoration movement. Uh, we have um, the Calvinists, I mean, on and on and on. All these people, that they come up with their new way. You have to have this to be saved. Wait a minute. But these guys over here say I have to do this to be saved. So who's right and who's wrong? What makes me, what incites me to trust you? Well, well, we have this and we have our own Bible that was given. Really? That's interesting because there's only one Bible that I'm, you know, that God made. Um, and what about these guys? Hey, y'all, what, what makes me want to believe you guys are right? Well, this is scripture and that scripture. Really? Well, because I can find a hundred other scriptures that deny what you're saying. So what are you telling me? Well, what's the truth? Oh, you guys. Oh, so y'all say I have to do this to be saved. Really? Then why does this scripture, this, here's a list of scriptures. Here's a PDF. Here's a list of scriptures that say that's not the truth. So where's your doctrine? Who's right? Which one of you three is right? Which one of you a thousand different ways of believing and being saved are right? I do know the answer to that question. None of you are right. There is one way to get salvation, and that is through Christ Jesus. Jesus, the Christ, the anointed one, who did the work, who fulfilled the law, who died on the cross, and who was resurrected. None of us did that. He did that. He's the one that is the author and architect of our salvation. And it came through him from God. It is grace through faith you have been saved. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. There is no other way to be saved. God gave this to us. And the only thing you must do, the only work you must achieve, which is in the Bible, in Jesus' words, 
These are the works of the Father, that you believe in the one he sent. Who's the one he sent? Jesus Christ. So if the works of God are that we believe, what else is there we have to add? Nothing. All you have to do is believe. Again, I'll go back to the thief on the cross. He was our example. Worst of the worst. Terrible person. So bad he warranted being crucified. There were only three crosses there. And there was a horde of, of soldiers guarding that situation. This was an expensive punishment. That's why it was reserved for the worst of the worst. So if he was hanging on that cross, he wasn't baptized. He didn't follow the law. He went and did everything contrary to that. But on that day before he died, he recognized that Jesus was the Christ. And he acknowledged that fact and confessed it with his mouth. Believed it with his heart, confessed it with his mouth. Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. And we will see him when we get there. But I think it's interesting that here's Christ and behind him were the two other crosses and it was the divi division of humans. These humans believed, these humans didn't believe. And he showed exactly how it was going to be. You're either going to fully believe like this thief did that went to heaven with him or you're going to be like this other thief who mocked him. And we see that in this very day. And it is horrible to see it. But... Don't fret this and don't let them bring you down. I did a prayer about this this morning. They will have their day. They have very limited time left. When the rapture happens, a bunch of people are going to get convicted. And they're going to turn back. They will be saved. But there's going to be a bunch that aren't. And this is their choice. Not based off lack of knowledge. Based on knowledge. They didn't want this. And they will turn away from it. Follow Christ, set the example, leave them with good memories of you, leave them with pleasant memories of you, and let God deal with the rest of it. Plant the seeds, He will water. I love you guys very much. I hope you guys are sticking with the truth. You don't have to believe me. You don't have to believe anybody else. The only thing you need to do is open your Bible and read it. Read it in prayer. Father, give me revelation when I read your word. Open my eyes and my heart to what this is that I may receive the truth. And he will give it to you, plain and simple. Be blessed in Jesus' name. I pray he, pray he blesses you richly in Jesus' name. And that you will readily receive this revelation and, these lo and this love. And stick with the truth. Because it's in the scripture. It's not like I picked one verse. I can go through and I can find hundreds of verses to back up everything I've shared with you guys and you see them on the screen it's not like I'm trying to deceive you it's right there and you can in my older videos where I didn't have this app I give you the references in the video write them down go look them up yourself in the Bible the best way to understand what somebody's talking about when they give you one or two three verses is go read that whole chapter that way you can see it in context I promise you as I'm sitting here and as Christ is my witness, living in me and standing next to me. If you go at this with the right heart, you will learn the same things the rest of us are learning. You will see the same things the rest of us are seeing. And you will have faith and you will not stumble and you will not falter. And you will understand exactly how all this is supposed to unfold. I promise you that. It is in Jesus' name I bless you all. And pray that you get this and pray that you understand and pray that you have joy and faith. And pray that we will all be together when we go up, which is about to happen very quickly. I'll see you guys in the next video.